Why can't you explain puns to kleptomaniacs? Because they take everything literally. Welcome to the jungle, bitch! Welcome to my channel. My name is Kat Kinway, and this is Artsy Fartsy Magic. See my peanut butter jelly snack, pull it right, bust it uh, painted. If you're new to my channel, I talk about random subjects, mostly psychology related, and draw at the same time. It's so wild, it's almost magical. On this episode, we are going to be learning about dark psychology. <laughs> That's right, we are gonna be learning about manipulation. Okay, let's draw some stuff. My best friend's grandma used to say, let me tickle your pickle. She didn't know what it meant. She was just like, let me tickle your pickle. Like, I'm gonna tickle you. But she didn't know it meant like dirty stuff. <laughs> um, so I'm your grandma. We are gonna tickle your pickle in this video. I love you. So for this video, we are going to be doing seven facts about manipulation. Ding dong, bitches! It is a form of dark psychology, and one of the first facts that we're going to be going into is, I thought this one was a little strange. It's about how auditory patterns can change people's moods and induce trance-like states that can help seduction or increase its feelings. Nothing lubricates the gears of love like a great playlist of seductive music. Sensual seduction. You know, what's a good one? The good old stripper T song. I'ma grind on you. Grind on me. That's not how it goes. I, I'm really bad at lyrics with music. I only remember the beat and that's it. So probably not the best person for that. Anyways, moving on to <laughs> fact number two, which is reverse psychology. What do you refer to? I think we've all heard of reverse psychology before, but the actual term simply means that you're doing or telling someone a certain thing to motivate them to do the opposite of what you tell them to do. Plain and simple, people don't like being told what to do. So if you tell them to do something, they're going to do the exact opposite. Just like I acted in my childhood with my parents. Reverse psychology feeds on the concept of the ego. It works perfectly on people who have a high ego. <clears throat> Teenagers. People with high egos tend to protect and follow their pride, which makes them a victim of this tactic. Oh, that little bitch. An example of this would be teachers telling students they are stupid or lazy to motivate them to study and actually get high scores. So that's a, that's a good example, like in a positive way. And I was trying to think of a bad example for reverse psychology, but you don't normally see people trying to use it for bad behavior, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> like calling someone stupid or lazy is bad. Like you should not do that. But if you're a teacher and you're just trying to kickstart some students' grades, I don't see the problem in it. Maybe that's why I'm not a teacher. Cause, <laughs> fuck them kids, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love all the babies. The third fact is love flooding. You heard that right. It refers to buttering up someone until they reach a state where they cannot deny a request. I feel like sometimes we do this and we don't realize we're doing this. Basically, this is a dark psychology tactic that is frequently used by many people as it's the only way they get what they want from others. So love flooding works on people who easily fall for words. An example of love flooding is when someone butters you up with pleasing words that fit your personality. You see him slash her as a nice person who truly supports you, but they intend to make you unable to deny any requests from them. If you want to deny a request they have made, you will think of yourself as a bad person. I think I fall for this a lot. <laughs> Your friends will compliment you and cheer you up with charming words before they request something from you. I know I have definitely done this with my friends in a joking way, but I didn't realize it was dark. <laughs> you don't know the power of the dark side. Okay, so the fourth fact is 
persuasion, and authority. Advertisers use persuasion and authority to gain trust and convince people to buy products. We see this basically every day. Most of us are convinced when persuasion and authority are used because big brands use persuasion through celebrity endorsements. <clears throat> I could do Beyonce. You know how Beyonce sings? She goes like this. <laughs> That's all it is. I hate that. Oh, I'm triggered. Interesting. They exploit the fact that people have irrational ideas, godly praise, and implicit trust in celebrities. And there's some like YouTubers out there that I really love. And when they ever advertise a product, it makes me want to buy it because they really love it. So I totally get that. Another example would be health products that include phrases like trusted by eight out of 10 doctors or recommended by scientists. You know, you trust them. <laughs> well, probably not anymore after COVID, but. <laughs> <laughs> Coronavirus! Coronavirus! Okay, so this is a random side note, but do you ever just chew like that first like fresh piece of gum and you have to chew it thoroughly before you do anything else? Because I just did that but we good. Anyways, we're moving on to the fifth fact. Fifth fact is emotional manipulation. Emotional damage. Emotional manipulators victimize themselves to make the other person feel guilty. People are more likely to punish themselves in relationships when they find out that they are guilty. Emotional manipulators prey on this and act in a certain way to remind the victim of their past mistakes or how bad they are. The victim starts acting out of sympathy. In that way, they get what they desire. Emotional manipulators are well known for using withdrawal. The silent treatment is more often used in relationships. It's when a person whom you expect much from starts ignoring you. The lack of presence creates an imbalance and makes the victim crave closeness. Man, why does this sound so familiar? <laughs> I'm not pointing fingers. People who use emotional manipulators obviously are narcissists. These are the main peeps that do it, you know? People with an inflated sense of self-worth and the desire to be praised can make you feel guilty and insecure so that you can praise them and tell them what they want to hear. So I think you know by now whenever I feel uncomfortable or just really anything, I laugh a lot. And I noticed that I did that the other day with one of my patients because we were testing her urine for a pregnancy test and she was in her 40s. And she was like, if I'm pregnant, that's gonna be the death of me. And I started laughing because I thought she was joking at first. And then she was like, I'm serious. <laughs> and I was just like, I, I, I'm just, it's a coping mechanism. <laughs> And that's what it is. It's a coping mechanism. I don't know how else to react, so I just laugh. <laughs> Moving on to the sixth manipulation fact. This tactic is choice restrictions. So you give limited choice options, which makes a person forget what he slash she truly wants to choose. An example that is primarily used with this manipulation tactic is in parents. <laughs> it all began on the day of my actual birth. Both of my parents failed to show up. Parents are well known for making choices for their kids. Though it might not be their kid's best choice, they use choice restrictions to let their kid choose what they prefer for their kid. And the last manipulation tactic, which I feel like is the most common one, is gaslighting. I woke up in a new Bugatti. It's one of the dark psychology tactics where the abuser misleads the target, creating a false narrative and making them question their judgments in reality. Gaslighting can happen between friends and family members, but it's often seen in manipulative relationships. And I must add, it's also, it's also with employees. Like your boss, upper management, really knows how to gaslight their employees, dude. But an example of gaslighting in an abusive relationship is where a person lies to make you question your judgment and sanity and makes you feel confused. Yeah, I'm confused for sure. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite manipulation fact was and if you've ever accidentally tried this on people or on purpose. I know there's probably some things that I've done that I didn't realize was manipulative, but you know, that's life. We make mistakes and we learn lessons, right?
<laughs> but I just want to say thank you so much for watching my video. I haven't posted in months because of life hitting me in the face pretty hard with a break. Then I got ran over and then I'm I'm working on things, you know. Anyways, thank you for watching. Love you all. And I'll see you next time. Peace, love, and magic. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thing.